Project Los Angeles, Episode 7. And my special guest today is Matt Gonzalez. How's it going, Matt? Doing good, Matt. How about you? Not everything's good, but we're going to be doing a 90s nostalgia movie episode. So these, this list isn't necessarily our favorite movies individually, but it's five movies that we decided to talk about because we both know enough about them. I think the distinction that we were trying, or that I was pointing out yesterday, was that they're not necessarily the best movies of the 90s, because if it was, right. I'd put Goodfellas on there. I'd probably put Boys in the Hood on there. I have some different movies. Um, right. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, it's, it's, I, not, it's not the best movies of the 90s list. But I think the easiest way is to do it alphabetically, so we don't have to like uh, decide which one's our favorite right now. So if by the end of the episode... I already know which one's my favorite. So, Big Daddy, when was the first time you watched Big Daddy, and what was the setting? Movie theater. I watched the theater with my mom, and I remember we actually had to, we had crappy seats, because that was a packed movie. Yeah. Um, I can't, that movie, if I remember correctly, it came out just after The Water Boy. So, when I grew up, I actually hadn't seen um, Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison, really. So, my, my first introduction to Adam Sandler was The Water Boy, and uh, I freaking loved The Water Boy. I was like, shit. Um, what so then what when year I did Water Boy come out? I think it was just the year before. Adam Sandler made so many freaking movies in the 90s. It was like five or what six. What year did The Waterboy come out? 98, yeah. How is it even possible to do production so often? Like, I feel like it takes more than a year to do a movie. Well, because shooting only takes like a month or two. So, like, he, his role in it is like this long, you know? So he can film January to February, and then he films another one March to whatever. So he can film five movies back to back, and they just release them when they release them, you know what I mean? Isn't he? Because most of these Adam Sandler movies are what the the Gilmore Productions or the Happy Madison Happy Madison Productions. Is he a director on his movies also, or how much does he play the role in production? I think he's directed a few. Uh, I think he's a flat out producer on on just about every single one of them in the last ten years. I think the first time I saw it very well might have been with you because I remember I had Big Daddy on DVD yeah, as one of my that first. Was DVDs. in your guys' van? In my van, yeah. But I do correlate most of Adam Sandler movies to watching with like my cousins I believe I don't remember the exact setting but probably your house probably one of the times that we were hanging out so for Big Daddy why did why did Big Daddy make your top five list or what do you what's your favorite parts about Big Daddy so I had an uh, interesting way of picking this movie and it was not specifically because I, I gravitate so much towards it and I do I do love this movie yeah. uh, I just knew that I had to pick something from Adam Sandler because Adam Sandler when I think 90s I'm, th- I'm picking movies I, it, he's gotta be on it because that's, that's just that's just is what it is thing is I actually I don't I, I feel like you don't feel the same Billy Madison Happy Gilmore as much as I like him I've like outplayed them. Like they're to the point where I watch them now. Mm. I'm really not having that much enjoyment out of it. Versus Big Daddy, I still do, which is why I picked that one. Not necessarily because I like it more, but just because the enjoyment factor hasn't gone away. I when I was watching it now, I think I always felt it. Maybe I like Big Daddy for a longer time because I almost relate to the character of Adam Sandler. Like he's like a lazy dude that has sweats on all the time, and he's like yeah, he's like his character. I could assimilate myself to being yeah, him, well, and I think that's why exactly, I like it more. Yeah. And when you watch it, you see like he's he's still like trapped being a kid. At the yeah. same time, his roommate is getting engaged to someone else, and like everyone's becoming adults, and all his friends yeah. are becoming lawyers, and he's still trapped in the, in the boys' mentality. And it's like yeah. it's almost like a coming of age story, but for an adult, you know? Yeah, and they don't. It's a lot, it's a lot more relatable. And also, maybe I think I was fascinated that it was New York because I can't tell you where Happy Gilmore or Billy Madison was. Happy Gilmore, maybe Louisiana, but. I like the fact that it was set in New York. The apartment is like what wins me over. Those stairs and the brick yeah. and like well, the whole thing the is just exposed. crazy. It's yeah. huge. You know what? It's that fascination with the apartment and New York and the fact that he's like the single bachelor that is just like a lazy guy trying to get his life together. I connected with all those, and it sticks with me even through the years. Wish the good surprise on you. That's. That's always a classic. Yeah. Man. Well, that, yeah. Because that's, that's one of those quotes you can use. You don't use it all the time, but when you can yeah. use it, I feel like everyone's like, ah, like not not a whole lot of people don't get that reference. You know? Like it's a good catchphrase for everyday life. Yeah. I love the part where they're rollerblading and the kid throws a stick at the rollerblader and the rollerblader falls into the water. He's like, goddamn stick! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a lot of times when you watch movies, um, after enough repetition of watching it, the songs kind of like get that nostalgia feeling that we yeah. just you hear the song, you're like, oh yeah. I gotta say, watching Big Daddy, Dang. killer soundtrack, man. Yeah. I actually, I was watching, they actually Shazammed a few of them because I'm like, these are just awesome songs. Like Big Daddy out of 10. Is that what we're doing out of 10? Yeah. 
I'm not going to say it's a perfect movie, but it's down. I'll give it a 9 out of 10 for sure. Easy. Wow. I would probably give it an 8. I I really enjoy it, but I think, especially after the rest of the movies that we're going to talk about, it's hard to put it at a 9. Dumb and Dumber, do you remember the first time you watched Dumb and Dumber? And where? The first time? Yeah. I don't remember the first time I watched it, but I do remember the first time that I rewatched it and then discovered how much I freaking love that movie, which was in Mexico. Uh, so we have a, a house in Mexico. Um, so my dad, he, um, back in the day, for the youngsters out there, I uh, used to record movies on, on VHS. So I put on Dumb and Dumber and sure enough, man, that was a classic. Was I remember it. specifically in Mexico that one time uh, when that scene comes on, he goes, uh, Mary? I desperately want to make love to a schoolboy. I literally yeah. fell out of the chair laughing. <laughs> like, I, on the floor, it was it was the funniest thing in the fucking world. Like, that was classic. Yeah. The first time I knew Dumb and Dumber was a thing was when your cousin Lenny and your other cousin dressed up like Dumb and Dumber. I saw that, yeah. and I didn't get it. I was like, prom? yeah, and I didn't get it, so I was like, whoa, that's stupid outfits. <laughs> and then I saw the movie, I'm like, holy shit, it all makes sense now. It's actually really genius. I didn't even know how they got those suits, to be honest. With seeing it then, um, what's what would you say your favorite your favorite part, part or it could be parts, parts are of the movie? Um, the schoolboy part? That, that one part, schoolboy for sure. Yeah. Um, drinking the pee. Um, that's yeah. always a classic. Pumpkin pie hair, cut a freak. Hair cut Get out of here. Keep your mouth shut if you knew it was good for you, buddy. <laughs> Tic tac, sir. <laughs> um, what other parts do you say is your. Uh, I would also say the whole dream sequence is slam the beginning to end. With the kung fu so guy. It starts with. The... with... <laughs> That, and then he's doing the jokes with the thing. I was like, oh, that's a real nice key, man. <laughs> and then when he, she pulls the shirt up, it's the head, like that whole freaking uh, thing. Plus that song, I saw her sitting in the dun, 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 dun. classic song. Yeah. yeah, that whole that whole scene is just genius. The next movie on the list was Groundhog Day. You have a special connection to Groundhog Day, and I think after you started making me watch Groundhog Day, all, all these movies are because you made me watch Now I think about it. Maybe except Hulk. Did I make you watch Groundhog Day, though? You definitely did, because I didn't care about Groundhog Day or Bill Murray at all. And then you, it might have been when we were living together, that, you, or maybe even before, I think it was before, but you kept on ranting and raving about Groundhog Day, and I didn't get Bill Murray's humor at the time, and now, I love it. Was I, I was ranting a rate of it outside of the period of time where I was, so the backstory is I broke yeah. my leg and in the hospital, for some reason that movie was just on repeat. I think I had a VHS, I don't know what it was, but I just. Your dad brought the like box from Mexico. He's yeah, like, don't exactly. worry, I always got in the car. <laughs> for whatever reason, I was in the hospital for three days. That movie was just on and on and on and on and on. So I fell in love with it. Didn't notice before because I didn't really look into it, but they're supposed to be in Punk, Punk's Attorney, Punk's Attorney. Pittsburgh. Puxatawney, Pittsburgh, right? Or Philadelphia. Or, you know, which one's the state? Yeah, I think you're right. Pennsylvania's the state. Pennsylvania, yeah. Puxatawney in Pennsylvania. But they take the whole thing takes place in Woodstock. While they were filming, they were supposed to make it seem like it was Puxatawney. But then, and I never thought anything different. I just thought it was a city. But apparently during the recording, they went to Puxatawney and they said, your town doesn't look enough like Puxatawney that we're going to do it in Woodstock. <laughs> and they got pissed. Like, they like almost vetoed the movie from having to do anything like they like the groundhog they didn't let him take the groundhog and they like got pissed at the movie at the beginning but in the movie on the main street where ned comes up and he's like ned ryerson in the background there's a, a store ned, ned the head. yeah <laughs> and there's a, a store in the back that says woodstock it says like woodstock jewelry and i was like how did they not take that out like that is always in the film one of my favorite scenes is for Right, like during the earlier parts, like when he starts changing and being like a good guy, I didn't really care too much. It wasn't that funny, but the beginning when he's I think an asshole. The beginning is funny. and end scenes are my favorite. I like the redemption factor at the end. I'll say that. Yeah, it's, it's like a cool when part. It all comes together. Yeah, it's you like playing it's the piano and, and, and blah blah blah. Yeah, I do like that part. Yeah, no, it was it was a good turn for sure. Um, I think I really liked I liked the banter, like the super sarcastic banter between him and. The bed and breakfast lady, like a sweet lady. Yeah. And she's like, How do you spell espresso cappuccino? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, You ever have deja vu? And she's like, I could check in the kitchen. And he's like, No, don't worry about it. Like the whole time he's like super, <laughs> yeah. like a dick to her. And it's like a poor lady that's running a bed and breakfast. Like it looks like a successful or he's, one too. He gets the, the cold water. He goes, 
Would it be hot water today, Mama? And she goes, oh, there wouldn't be any today. And he goes, oh, uh, why would there be? Me. I like the whole dynamic with him and, and what's her face? The girl? I forget the girl. her name. Uh, um, I, I, yeah, I know what you're talking but about. But I like I like her, um, or I like so, him learning to drink, like that bar scene where he does it like, a couple few times until he finally gets it right. Do you remember the and drink then, name? Uh, yeah, uh, Sweet Vermouth on the Rocks and the Twist, please. What are the chances of getting out of town today? The van still won't start. Larry's working on it. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Can I buy you a drink? Okay. Uh, sweet vermouth, rocks with a twist, please. For you, miss? The same. That's my favorite drink. Yeah, that, right. that whole yeah. scene, because it's, it's only a few of them, but as soon as he nails it, he's like, all right, cool. And then it kind of moves on throughout the date, and you see like how many times for each scene. So I like that part, too, actually. Pulp Fiction, do you remember when you first watched it, and do you remember where you watched it, and what your thoughts were about it? Uh, not specifically so much, but I know it was sometime in high school. But when I saw it, that was like a movie that I was like, holy shit, I had been missing out my whole life. Because that movie had everything. It's comedy, it's action, it's like just crazy shit going on. Like I was, that was the, yeah, that, that instantly, the second I saw it, I was like, favorite movie all time, no questions asked. But that was the first time I watched a movie where they do the skips, where they do like front to back, or it's, it's out like, of order. Yeah, that's the first time I realized that, and I was like, "Holy shit, it's so confusing!" Well, but I love it. That movie is cool because it's it's out of order, but it's also intermingled. So it's like the yeah. stories are all interlaced, yeah. but it's also they're out of order. So technically, it's like this is coming here, and then this is coming here, and yeah, it's cool. Well, the very first scene is the very last scene, and it's yeah, just exactly the beginning of the very last scene, which everything is just like mind blowing because. I don't know. I, and that's why I wanted to kind of do a Quentin Tarantino uh, episode too. Maybe we could do that in the future. But he has a knack for at least his first few movies. They were like crazy, crazy, complicated, good movies that he did it like perfectly. And this was a movie that I think he did like that puzzle piece storyline, like damn near perfect. And uh, I love it. And he doesn't do it the same like other movies. Like he does it, but it's not as effective. Do you have any favorite parts? Like what's your favorite parts in least favorite parts would be happening in these favorite parts most of of samuel jackson's line like the um especially with the robber um did the you hear me he's like yes you did yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah it's, it's that exact line like every time i hear that i'm like oh that's just that's cold man like because you could tell samuel jackson's like a bad motherfucker like, I, i've been doing this a long time and i don't give a fuck what you said like this, yeah it's you can talk big show you want but i i hold the cards of this one like you you don't know what you're up against just recently when i watched it again i really really enjoyed the um uh marcellus wallace's wife which uh, umar thurman from that whole scene like at the beginning i didn't think it was like a big part of the movie but that part from meeting to the diner to the overdose to the like the the build up of it and then like dropping off at home saying like if you tell your boss i'll be in as much trouble as you are and she's like i seriously doubt that um that whole part was like so well done and like it's most of it, like half of it is just conversation, I realized. Like I was pausing and like I would go to the bathroom or something and I would pause. A lot of that part with Uma Thurman is a lot of just conversation at the diner, but it's done yeah, so well. That. Quentin Tarantino is all dialogue driven. Like yeah. a lot of his movies, Reservoir, Reservoir Dogs, Dogs, the first tension. scene. Yeah. The whole movie is literally just talking. It's like it's like 80% talking with like 20%, oh, he cut his ear off or oh, he did that. And it's, the case. What do you think about the case, the briefcase? Because there's a lot of like backstory in that. In terms of like what never I think's in it. What do you think is in it? Why do you think it's in there? Where is it from? Like, what do you think the significant of significance of the case is? I mean, have you you've seen the thing that what's his face? Marcellus Wallace has the bandaid on the back of his neck. Yeah. And that signifies that it's his, his soul removed of, and by the blah, devil. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um. I don't know if I agree with all that. I I, I think it's just gold. It's gold. I think it's just gold. I think it's just a, a, a suitcase full of gold bars. And when they open it up, they're like, all right, I'll, I'll do whatever the fuck you say. I won't do shit right here. You know what's interesting? Well, I could agree to a certain extent too, because one of the theories was that it's just like a bunch of jewels. It was the jewels that were from Reservoir Dogs. From Reservoir Dogs, yeah. That was the one of the theories. But at the diner part, and I didn't realize this till just yesterday um the diner part where he's like what's in the briefcase and he's like my boss's dirty laundry he's like open it up and he's like i can't do that 
finally opens it up and it glows in his face. It's 666. Yeah, it's 666. Well, they show that at the first scene, but he opens it up, Samuel Jackson, he shows this guy what's in it and he says, Is that what I think it is? Mm Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. But why why would he, he wouldn't say that if it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. Because he doesn't even know who Marcellus Wallace is, he wouldn't say it. Yeah, his like, bars like, what of gold. What does soul even look like? Well, right. Yeah. So it's something that is so amazing that he knows exists, but is not normal. So bars of gold, diamonds. Why would he say well, like? I mean, you know, diamonds. I mean, that's still got to be the same thing. Like when you see diamonds, you're like, like, are are, are you about to like pull a switch on something? Is it fake or is like, is this fucking twenty million dollars worth of diamonds right here? And I said the jackpot. I think directors do this on purpose where they leave a lot of unknown unspoken uh like loops to make people talk about the movie like how we're talking about the movie yeah. i'm sure this happened in the 90s when this first came out everyone was probably like what's in the case what's in the case all right rush hour this is the last of our movies not by rating but because it's alphabetically the last movie what are your thoughts first time you watched it why do you like it? Why do I like it? It's hilarious. It's amazing. Um, I don't know. Rush Hour is just one of those movies that I don't know. It's just it's just a combination of hilarity and action, and, and there's a little bit of romance going on there too. Um, Ooh. Between Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker. I was gonna say there's no girls in there. <laughs> Rush Hour. No, Rush Hour is one of those movies. The first time I watched it, freaking loved it. Um, I didn't watch it in the movie theater, but I watched it. Not too long after, honestly, I must have seen it probably like 98, 99. Because when did part two come out? I saw part two actually in the movie theater because of Alex. Alex watched part two. He goes, you watch Rush Hour Part Two? Da, da, da. And I was like in the fucking fifth grade or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't even know there was a part two. And then so I I, I already loved part one, but I rewatched it again because he told me about part two. And I was like, holy crap, because I had it on video. Again, recorded on VHS. And then watched part two. And... um I mean, part two is amazing also, but yeah, Rush Hour is one of those movies that immediately, like, yeah, it was, that was an instant classic, in my opinion. As soon as I saw it, I was like, I love every single thing about this movie. Do you like number one better than number two? Now that... Uh, yeah, at the time, at though, this age? a long time, I like part two better, honestly. You know what's weird? <laughs> in Rush Hour on IMDb, on you know, there's a cast list? Yeah. Jackie Chan is the second one behind Ken Loong, which is like the guy who's like, uh, probably like a man. He's number one. Jackie Brown's Sing. number one. Yeah, saying he's number one. Jackie Brown is two. Chris Tucker's like Jackie nine. Chan. Jackie Brown? What is it? <laughs> Jackie Brown. Jackie, Jackie, Brown. <laughs> Jackie, Chan. <laughs> Jackie Chan is number two. Chris Tucker's number like nine. He's behind Sue Young. <laughs> And he's on the cover. <laughs> that one song, I feel like everyone, that one song always, the Mariah Carey one. Yeah, not, every time not, you not, hear it, you're like, ah! It just puts yeah. you in an A in a great mood, it's a great song, but B, it puts yeah. you like in like in rush hour mode for some reason. Yeah. And it's, it's the weirdest thing, because when I hear it, I don't necessarily like imagine myself in rush hour, but like somehow it, it kicks in where that magic is like, yeah. da, da. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think it was like just a very fun, light hearted moment. And the song was like a good depiction of that era because that song was like killing it at that time. And yeah, exactly. it's still killing it. Um, but yeah, I think that was, there's a lot of good feel good parts. Like it's a very good feel good movie. Chris Tucker's like hilarious. Like all, like a lot of Almost every th- there's very few movies that every word that comes out of their mouth is a funny part. Chris Tucker, almost every word is something funny. Been looking for your sweet and sour chicken ass. And also, I just gotta say, the car, fucking the sick the stingray. ass stingray Corvette. Oh yeah. Oh baby, yeah, that's that's a that's a sweet ride. Um, Five what classes. what would you say uh, the rank is from one to ten for Rush Hour? Uh, again, this is comedy scale. I'm a, I'm gonna just go ahead and do it, man. I'm gonna say this is a nine and a half, man. This is, uh, this is, this is. Uh, I want to give it a ten. I really do. Um, that being said, no, I have issues with the ending of it, so I'll give it a nine and a half. But push came to shove. If I said ten out of ten, I wouldn't feel bad about that. But yeah. it's, I would just say that it's, it's, it's right there. It just needs a little cleaning up. Yeah, I think I'll give it a ten. I think Big Daddy wasn't quite a ten for me. 
as a whole on the list is, I mean, it made the list. So it was obviously good, but I would think, I think I would get rush hour 10 for like comedy classics that have like yeah, nostalgic sure. feeling to it. It's like Without a doubt. close to damn near perfect. Like at its time. Well, and it holds up too. Cause like you, you saw it not in its prime. You saw it way two years down the road yeah. and you still loved it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a testament. It's, a, it's just a solid movie. To wrap it up, appreciate you coming on. Shout out to Matt A. Gonzalez. Shout out to you, though, doing big things. I, I, I like where the podcast is going, the direction it's taking. Thank so you. So check out Project Los Angeles. Ooh, I appreciate Although it. you're already doing it. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Till the next one, I guess, man. Cheers, my brother. Stay Cheers. crispy. <laughs> Stay crispy. Stay podcasty. <laughs> All right. Adios. You're only wasting your time. I'm a professional. <laughs>